and welcome to episode 41 of the D-Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia, and I'm coming to you from the ever-so-sunny West Texas. My dog Marjorie is watching, yes, watching the neighbors uh, pack up their boat uh, to take to the lake, and I think she's a little jealous and wants to go with them, so... Uh, yeah, I totally got distracted. Marjorie, you okay? Oh, yeah. Where's your bone? I put peanut butter on her rawhide bone, and I think she probably, uh, has taken care of that already. Okay. So, yes, this is my podcast about all things crafty and my dog. Uh, so welcome if you are a new viewer, and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. And if you're a returning viewer, perhaps you notice the difference in color quality on the screen. That is Marjorie offering up her rawhide bone for a refill of peanut butter, hey? She's like, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. That, that, that sounds good. Why don't you take that in the other room, hon? Can I switch the camera view? No. Here's my recording setup. Just, you know, why not? Uh, I set the camera on top of, you know, board games and knitting books because that's what we need. Uh, there's Marjorie offering up her rawhide bone. Oh, look, I left some peanut butter. Hmm. Yeah, do you want some more peanut butter? Oh, look at that excitement. There's my stuff that I'm going to talk about today. Spoilers. Okay. I'm gonna get her more some more peanut butter because what she'll do is she'll keep dropping this bone on the floor to make lots of noise to get me to do stuff for her. Yeah. Who's really in charge of this house, huh? I know it. I know it. And I'm back. Okay. So, um, yes, I am trying this out. I am recording from my phone instead of my webcam. And uh, so far I'm liking it because the color on screen is insane. Like, it looks like it does in real life. And I don't know why, but the webcam just made everything look kind of dull. And this camera makes everything look really bold and vibrant. And that's how it really is. So I'm very excited to see how this goes. I'm a little concerned that I will run out of space on my phone <laughs> when I'm recording. Um, but maybe not. I I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this goes. But... Uh, yeah, normally what I would I would have sitting here is my laptop in front of me with the webcam up on top of the laptop and uh, be recording that way. So by using the phone, it's it's a much smaller device. I do have it on a, a small, what, like six inch tall tripod, um, which takes up a lot less space than a whole laptop. So that that's nice um yeah so if you're a returning viewer thanks for coming back and I hope you can you can also see the improvement in color on screen because I have struggled with that um for what a year and a half now I've been podcasting so this is a relief <laughs> anyway uh, yeah, so this is episode 41, and uh, it has only been like five days since I recorded last. And the reason I'm recording so soon is because I need to get back on my Friday schedule of recording. Uh, I am a college math instructor, and classes start on Wednesday. Yeah, and Friday is my usual day of recording. So, here I am. 
on a Friday afternoon recording my podcast for you guys. Alright, so yeah, I, I last recorded on Sunday. Today is Friday. It's only been five days. So I don't have a lot to show you, but I'd rather stay in touch than not. Because I love you guys. Okay. So I don't have anything to drink, and that was silly of me. <clears throat> I know better. Like I said, I'm a teacher and I talk a lot. I teach math, so I do a lot of talking. <laughs> and I know that when I'm teaching, when I'm lecturing, I have to have water or tea or something to drink because my throat will get dry and I'll get really hoarse. And here I am starting to experience that. So you know what that means? I just need to start talking about the knitting. So, um, announcements. We have so make-alongs going on, they are year-long make-alongs having everything to do with finishing blankets. So, uh, if you have not already, you should join the group on Ravelry. Just go to Ravelry.com. Under Groups, search for D Hard House Podcast. Uh, and just click the Join button. Uh, all of the information is available in those threads. We have the Cozy Couch Make Along, which is about making adult sized blankets, and the Cozy Crib Make Along, which is all about making baby blankets. Um, yes, so we have a finished objects thread or FO thread, as well as uh, chatter threads where you can share your progress and talk about things. Um, Yes, at the end of the year, I will be drawing prizes for the randomly drawn winners out of the finished object threads. Uh, yes. We do have a knit along coming up. We have the... I just forgot the name for like two seconds. All the Shawls of Fall knit along. <laughs> All the Shawls of Fall Knit Along will start on September 22nd and end on December 21st. It's going to run for the entire fall season. And this is great because here is where I actually store all my shawls. It took me a while to figure out where to put them and how to store them and, and whatnot. So I just have them folded in different ways because they're different shapes and why not? Uh, but I just have them folded and stacked up here in my craft room, right here. And uh, yeah, so they're all right there. I have a couple around the house that I've been wearing, but they mostly stay here. <laughs> um, yeah, so all the shawls of fall will be all about knitting or crocheting shawls. And uh, I will be having a prize at the end of that knit along. I will announce that prize in September. It's late August, so <laughs> soon. Uh, since the knit along starts on September 22nd, I will definitely announce the prize in here before the knit along starts, so you know what um, you have a chance to win. So basically, uh, any shawl you finish during the knit along uh, will get you one entry uh, towards the giveaway. So what you'll do is take a picture of your finished shawl and then post it in the finished objects thread. However, if you knit one of my patterns, that can get you a bonus entry. So what you'll do is just post your picture twice to get you two entries. Uh, and then at the end of the knit along, I will randomly draw a winner and that person will win the prize, so, yes. Uh, there are no restrictions on yarn patterns. Any, I don't care how big or small your shawl is, I just am having so much fun knitting shawls and they're so great during the fall season that I wanted to run a knit along. So, uh, bring your game and like I said before, you could start your shawl now. It's just a matter of finishing it during the knit-along dates. So, 
I, I want to keep this really, you know, loosey-goosey. Anyone can participate uh, because it's more fun that way. <laughs> uh, so I did mention that if you knit one of my patterns, you get a bonus entry. And I do have a free shawl pattern available on Ravelry called Serendipity. So again, you don't even have to buy the pattern. You can use a free pattern and it doesn't have to be mine. Um, but if it is one of mine, it gets you a bonus entry. So it doubles your chances of, of winning and that's really fun too. So anyway, I keep laughing because I am so rambly today. Like insane. Okay. I have had a week of meetings and trainings and I am, yeah, I am, I'm here, so that's, that's something. I've survived. <laughs> okay. That, those are my announcements. Do I have any other announcements? No. Okay. So in these last five days, I haven't done much. I, I've gone to quite a few meetings, like I said, uh, trainings. Uh, turning in paperwork and all the things so yeah so I did finish uh, something so I have one finished object to show you and that is a pair of socks BAM there they are <laughs> these are socks for Michael um, no shame I, I I knit during some some meetings this week and I was nice about it. I kept really good eye contact. <laughs> Honestly, I set this down a lot to like take notes. So not a lot of knitting got done in meetings, but hey, you take it where you can get it, right? I am not giving you more peanut butter. She just looked at me. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so, the, so these are socks for Michael. Uh, the yarn is Patton's Croy. Wow, why did I stretch that name out? The yarn is Patton's Croy. The color is Eclipse, which is blue and gray. And I used US size one needles. I really wanna get better about knowing my gauge. Uh, the pattern is a one by one rib on the top of the foot as well as all the way around the leg. Um, you know, stocking it on the bottom. I did a short row heel with a gusset. Okay. You saw the last episode. We need to have a conversation. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this gusset was interesting to try while knitting this toe up because when you're knitting toe up okay it was hard to know it was hard to know where to start increasing for the gusset Oh, I'm so sorry she hit the table. Um, I think one of these has a longer foot than the other. But yeah, I don't know. I can't tell. I gotta have Michael put them on and see if the two socks feel any different or if they just look different because I kind of di I did, not kind of, I did do the increases in different places on these two socks. Yeah, it was an experiment. These are my experimental socks. But anyway, um, yeah, let's see, which one can you see it better on? This was the second sock. So with the second sock, yeah, this is the second one. 
So, maybe you can tell. Can you see that, right, where I did some increasing here and then the decreasing here? So on the second sock, what I did was increase and then a knit row, and then increase and a knit row, right? And then same thing here, decrease, knit row, decrease, knit row. On the first sock, I spaced it out more where it was like increase, knit two rows, then increase, then knit two rows, like, because I started the increases with an inch to go on the foot, and I realized I didn't want to increase too quickly. Anyway, so they're not spaced the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. The increases are not spaced out the same way on the two gussets. Not that you can tell just by looking at them, like on the sock blockers. Um, so I'm really curious how it's going to feel on, on his feet. And I'm not entirely sure I knit the legs to be the same length because, okay, when I put them on the sock blockers, first of all, the sock blockers are just a tad too short. So I do have a little bit of the, the toe hanging off the edge here, but you know, I have the same amount on the other one. So what I do is I try to line up the, the middle of the short row heel in the middle of the heel on the blocker. Anyway, when I do that, one is shorter than the other, which is a bummer, just a little bit. But when I was knitting them, right, when I was knitting that second sock, because I don't count my rows, um, that's not how I do it, um, but how I measured it was by holding the two socks up together and I lined up the toes and then held it like this. And yeah, I mean, but then I don't know, do the heels look like they're lining up in the same place? I don't know. He's got to try them on. These might be. These might be socks that he only wears if all the other ones are dirty. And then, then to top things off, uh, and I think this has something to do with the fact that I did the decreases in different places and also didn't take good notes on how long I did my short row heel, but the heels have different shapes. Look at that like like way different right I just folded the socks in half like what yeah so I don't know this is the first sock and you can see I did more rows in my short row heel than on the second one here I only did that many I did increase the same number of stitches I did make sure of that I don't know. I don't know what happened. But, you know, it, it's an experiment, so I'm going to have him try them on tonight and see how it feels and looks and if he can tell a difference. That's insane. Look at that. Whatever. <laughs> they are finished. They're finished. Yes, I will, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm curious to see what he says about how they feel. I don't, I don't even know. That is a thing. Uh, <laughs> so I finished something, so of course I had to cast something on, and that something is a sweater. Because, duh. Well, a cardigan. Okay, I cast out a cardigan. And I totally left the pattern over there. Whatever. I'll slide over. I'll put pictures in here. Um, yeah, so I cast on... 
Polly by Isabel Kramer, which is free on Ravelry. Um, yeah, I just, I like how academic it looks. Being someone in academia, I want this cardigan. So I cast it on. No, I have not finished my dad's sweater. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, I did pick up the stitches for the collar, um, not after the last podcast, like I said I would, I picked those up today. Yeah. But I also mentioned needing to go button shopping for Dad's sweater, um, and I found some good candidates on Amazon, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and order them. Is that on Amazon? Yeah, they were only a couple dollars, uh, for ten buttons, and I need seven. So a few extras are always good because you never know, there could be one where it's just a little off and so you need a, a replacement. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and order those today because before I do, before I do the button band, I want to have the buttons because even though the pattern says use buttons that are a three quarter inch in diameter, I want to make sure that the buttons I get are actually three quarter inch in diameter and be able to hold it up against the buttonhole and make sure that I'm knitting something meant for three quarter inch diameter button. So, yeah, so I'm going to order that. I do have prime shipping, so this should get here in a couple days. And, uh, but I got to do the collar first. There aren't any buttons going on the collar, so I need to finish that first. And uh, I can do that. So, yes, I was holding off casting on a sweater or cardigan for myself until I finished Dad's sweater. I, you know, I did really good though because I made it through the sleeves and the body of that thing before I cast on for myself. So it's pretty good. All I have left is the collar and the button band to do on dad's sweater. So I got this. So I cast on a, that cardigan for myself and I am using, I am doing the striping pattern because I think it looks really nice and keeps things interesting. So I am using um, this, uh -huh. This is the main color for the body. Get used to my new camera setup here. How about focusing? Hey, do you do you like focusing or or what? Are you not made for that? Do I need to mess with my settings so that you'll focus? Whatever. It's a solid color. This is cloud born. Merino Superwash Sock Twist in the Shayla Heather colorway. Yeah, it's not going to focus like my webcam. Maybe I just got to play with my settings. Anyway, it's Cloudborn. Um, it is a superwash. It is 80% superwash merino wool and 20% polyamide. Um, so I know it is going to grow after I wash... Um, and block this. The garment is going to stretch out a bit. Um, that is what happened to my the last sweater I knit, the uh, the fade sweater, the not the find your fade because that's the shawl, which I did also knit. So faded, the so faded sweater. I knit all out of superwash nylon um, yarn, and it did grow after I washed it. So. So I know that. Um, and then the, the color I'm using for the stripes is a nice cream color. I do wear a lot of black. It's blacks and blues. So I wanted something that could either be worn with black or with blue. So I went with these two colors. So the cream is something I got from, um, so I was subscribed to Yarnbox, and unfortunately I think they've gone out of business, but this was one of the yarns I got out of Yarnbox. This is Holiday Yarns, Where It All Begins, is their label. 
Uh, this is Flock Sock Fingering. It has 400 yards in it. This is 75% superwash mer merino wool and 25% nylon. So almost the same content. Um, but uh, yes, it's very solid. It has a really nice twist on it. Um, this, cake, this cake came out really well. Don't always have good luck with cakes. But yeah, so very neutral should match almost anything that I have, which is great. Uh, I have knit myself only two garments. Uh, yeah, so I'm still working. <laughs> I'm still working on that, and I'm I'm sticking with the neutrals because I want the few knitted garments that I have to really be able to match anything I I would wear. So anyway, I am keeping this in my fall bag. So I do have my two balls of yarn in here. And I'm not really taking this project anywhere. I'm only working on it at home. This is what happens with big projects. They don't travel. Uh, unless we're going on a car ride. Like a really long road trip or something. And then, yeah, I'll, I will totally work on that in the passenger seat. So this is knit top down with the yoke and holy strings, what is going on here? <sighs> oh, I have my two ends on different sides, that's right. I stopped at an inconvenient place, go figure. So, <laughs> ah, so most of the yoke is knit in uh, garter stitch and it is knit flat, it's not knit in the round. So with garter stitch, you knit every row. Uh, but now I'm into the stockinette stitch section, so you knit one side, purl the other side, right? So let's see if I can maybe, well, it's not gonna look like, anyway. Oh gosh. Ooh, maybe that'll work. Okay. Ta-da! Ooh, that looks decent. Okay, so yeah, we've got garter stitch on the top for the yoke all in the main color. And then after you get done with the garter stitch section in the stock and net, you can start doing the stripes. So I've got my very first stripe in there. <laughs> but I like it so far. Um, I have not tried it on yet because number one, I'm super afraid the stitches are gonna fall off the needle. I don't have any stoppers to put on the end. Um, yeah, That's the main reason, honestly. What is going on over there? Oh, that's the arm stitches. <laughs> yes, so I've separated out the sleeves. It's kind of weird because the yoke is not as deep as you would think. Because you're going to come back and do the collar, which is most of what's up there by the neck. So, um, so I did this in five days, you guys, or, or less. When did I cast this on? Like, Tuesday? Monday? I don't even know. Anyway. Yeah, so, I'm this far. <laughs> uh, but I love it, because now I'm in the stockinette section, uh, you know, without increases and it's just really straightforward and so this is easy to work on while watching TV and I have those stripes there to keep me from getting completely bored which is nice and of course I'm very excited to have the finished project um, because I want to wear it and so I'm really excited to to work on this and and have this done this year and to wear it so yeah so now I also need to shop for buttons for myself because this will need buttons and maybe I'll just order two of those depending on the size buttons I need I need to read the pattern and see what size buttons it calls for I might just order two of those because the buttons I found for dad's sweater are like a nice dark wood button or at least they look like wood I don't know if they actually are 
have to read the thing again, <laughs> but uh, those would look really nice with this one. So if they're the same size that I need, I could just order a couple packs of those and get those, get those here. That'd be really cool. All right. So that's all I've been working on. I finished some socks, um, started a cardigan, and yeah, that is in the works. So, um, yes. Is that really it? That's really it. It has only been five days, Alicia. Gosh. And you had to work, like actually go to work this week. So stop expecting yourself to do all the things. Okay. Uh, yes, I have no shop update. There is the mailman. Cue Marjorie's barking. She's just barking. Oh, darn, there she goes. Okay, so, uh, where was I? I had to go see what the mailman brought us because she wasn't going to stop barking until I, you know, actually brought in the mail because that is the human's job. Uh, but I did notice that my, my camera stopped and had some kind of pop-up on the screen and I didn't read it in time. Uh, all I caught was duration. So I think this, uh, this does cap me out, I guess, at 30 minutes, I'm guessing. Anyway, that's good to know. Thanks for helping me test out all the things, guys. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's all I have for uh, knitting content. This is now the section where I talk about... Oh, please don't drop that on the floor. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> this is now the section where I talk about running and working out. And then that will be the end of the episode. I'll hang on to this. Yeah, it's one of her chewies. It is bacon flavored. And I don't know why she loves dropping, yes, these hard things on the wood floor. I guess she likes the sound. Anyway. All right, so um, yeah, the last episode was Sunday. Uh, so I'm going to need to restructure my weeks to go from Friday to Friday instead of Sunday to Sunday. Please don't. Okay. I'm going to have to wrap this up soon because she, she wants to play with me. So <laughs> I have learned the hard way that cross training is very important. Uh, that just doing one type of exercise uh, does strengthen those parts of your body, but it lets the other parts get weaker. And we need, I need those other muscles to stay flexible and help prevent injury. So, um, so I'm doing these workouts for cross training, uh, to go with my running. So I did the upper fix workout on Monday, which is arms and abs. Um, I did run on Tuesday. I ran uh, 1.2 miles on Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, I did not work out. Um, Wednesday, I had uh, a good portion of my day was spent in, in meetings. And on Thursday, the entire day was spent in training. Yeah. Uh, so I just took those to be my rest days. Uh, I had things to do at work and so I just saved my energy for that. Uh, Friday, which is today, this morning I ran 1.2 miles again. So this morning I ran 1.2 miles again. So, so far this week I've run uh, 2.4 miles. So 
that's pretty good. Um, last week, yeah, we'll just start there. So, from Monday to today, I've run 2.4 miles. Yes, she loves, she's loving it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, stop talking now and let you guys go because she really wants to play with this toy and it's going to continue to be loud. She's like, watch this, now I'm gonna go in the carpeted room. Oh, no, she's back, okay. I'll show you. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you are also a teacher, uh, have fun going back to school. If, if you already have students, um, then I hope your first few weeks are going well. If you have students um, you haven't seen yet, like myself, we don't start till Wednesday. Um, then then have a great first day of school. If you are a student of any kind, then also have a great uh, first day or first week back at school and I will I will see you guys next Friday. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>